I had an interesting delivery of stuff today. I was looking for random LED light sources on eBay, as one does, and I found a seller that had some really interesting ones, and this is what this video is about. It's a round one. Uh, hold on, where's the uh, where's the data sheet for that? Or data sheet, the, the eBay listing. The seller was x-web-top, and uh, this is listed as a 12-watt uh, lamp based on 2835 LEDs, 24 of them, which appear to be then running at about half watt each, which just seems quite high. But, um, it runs straight off 220 volt, and uh, I was interested in seeing the circuitry in it. But at the same time, I also noticed they were selling these little 5 watt cob arrays, which clearly have the uh, self-regulating resistive sort of limiter. And they also did a linear strip, uh, which also appears to have these. And interestingly, this linear strip has the uh, output connector, so you can chain them end to end like sort of fluorescent fittings which is interesting. This says uh, 2835-25LED. And interesting, it's got the rectifier at one end, and then it's got the regulator chip at the other, which does kind of make sense electronically. And it says no touching. No touching. Okay, I won't touch it. This one is very similar to that, but it's a linear version. What's intriguing about this is that the LEDs are in pairs. You've got the cold white, warm white, cold white, warm white, all the way along. And it's got a small electronic switching supply in the end. And once again, it's got the flex uh, here with a short tail. But it's also got some uh, terminals here that you can theoretically uh, just connect another one into. So you could stack these up if you wanted to light a large illuminated panel. And uh, I'll take those apart later. The other thing that I thought was very interesting was this. It's a filament lamp. And I'm going to give you the option in this. It's got a star-shaped filament. We can try it out now. Let's try it out now. Uh, where's the information on the filament lamp? I think I've got that here as well. Yes, I have. So this one, it says, uh, E27, 220 volt, five-pointed star, LED beam, creative light lamp, etc. Same supplier, X-Web-Top, although it seems to be a very common item. And um, the inside of it is the filament is formed as the LEDs deposited onto a square of glass. I've done a rough count on this. I reckon there's roughly about 50 LEDs in series. I'm not sure the power supply is, but it doesn't really flicker. Let me, well, actually, I say it doesn't really flicker. Let me grab the uh, meter up. I will test all these lights. So I'll plug this in. I shall plug in my little pink test lead. Here we go. And we'll screw it in. I have to say it's quite bright. It's almost a bit too bright to see the actual star. It is kind of swampy out. That's okay. It's what it does. Um, power consumption. It's passing 25 milliamps. I'm guessing that 25 milliamps is going through the LEDs, which is quite fierce. And it says it's read about, well, that it's drawing about 3.5 watts of power. Um, power factor is 0.569, which is, you know, meh. It's typical what you find of a simple electronic power supply. And what's notable is that if I shake it backwards and forwards, you're getting the camera shutter flicker, but I'm not getting, I'm just going to go off camera here, I'm not getting flicker at all off this, which is good. That suggests a little capacitor power supply in here. Uh, not sure. So uh, your call, do you want me to smash this open completely in another video? Take the module out and do some tests on it. Maybe make a new power supply and see what the power supply circuitry is. Your call entirely. But this is what the video is about here. It's this module here. So I'll get the little pink test holder out of the way and we shall open this. I have to concede that I have opened this already because when it came, I was quite excited. I wanted to see them all lit. And uh, I found that the inductor inside here was actually off. The, it hadn't been soldered very well, which is a bit annoying, but that's been fixed. I had to use a technique to fix it uh, that was mentioned by quite a few of you, including uh, Mike of Mike's Electric Stuff. I'm going to have to tread carefully here. I'm poking wires into connections that may be live. Yeah. Ugh. Don't do this at home, kids. Etc. Uh, but I had to use a technique to actually pre-warm the plate because this is based on an aluminium back panel. So this one, it says in the top it's rated 12 watts. This is just swamping out completely. Uh, that's not really surprising. Uh, what would happen if I held my sort of welding shade type things? Uh, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Is this going to work? Yeah, you get the gist there. It's not terribly helpful, is it? 
so 11 watts, um, 86 milliamps, yeah, power factor about 0.5 again, that's really common for these things. It's very bright, and I have tested it for a while, and the back plate went up to a temperature of about, uh, f the, the ambient temperature here is about 10 degrees Celsius, it's quite low, I just, I like a cold house, I, regulars to the channel will know that. This plate went back, uh, went up to about 50, so I'd say 40 above ambient, but if this is an enclosed fixture, it could go up quite high. But I think, oh actually I don't know what chip's in it, I see an inductor so it's not the self-regulating chip. Ah, right, okay. So let's open this. Now, I started talking about uh, a technique that uh, Mike of Mike's Electric Stuff and some others mentioned, and it was to preheat the uh, aluminium panel to make it easier to solder onto it, because that's what was wrong. The person that had soldered the, some of the manually soldered components on uh, hadn't given enough time or it hadn't been heated enough and the, the joints were just balled up. So this plate, the, uh, the aluminium heatsink plate here, is separate from these magnetic mounts. These are designed, I'm looking for a piece of steel, is it going to stick onto that? Yeah, it's going to stick to a degree onto that, it's not ideal because it's not, it's a sort of stainless type alloy. But, uh, it's, so it's designed to stick into an existing light fitting, and you can have this cable come out underneath or you can feed it through there and have it coming out over the top if it's easier to connect it in. The design of this is such that when you put screws in here, it doesn't do that though, it would theoretically provide a clamping effect with that aluminium plate clamping the cable, but that would get quite hot. Um, so let's open it up. That's what we want to do. We want to open this screwdriver. Two screws hold this closed. Once those two screws are out, is this going to come out relatively easily? I think it is. Here is the circuit board. And the circuit board, well, let's take a look at the, this first, the diffuser. Diffuser? Diffuser. Diffuser. I was going to say, I was thinking that it's got diffusion in it, so diffuser and diffusion, it came out wrong. But the strange, the little lenses are actually diffused inside. It's a clear round, a diffused area. I wonder why they did that. I think it might be the whole interior surface is textured. It's quite interesting. It's quite an interesting way that they've covered all the electronics over. It's not like the uh, bear modules that you can actually touch the live LEDs inside. Everything is fully enclosed. I should mention, though, that the fact the plate isn't grounded and the fact it's got so many um, tracks the other side forming a capacitive array, when I rubbed my finger across the back of this, I could feel a distinct, you could actually even hear it, my finger buzzing against the metalwork. There was a, a capacitively coupled current flow. I put my test lamps onto it and it lit the 12 volt LEDs, but that was just leakage. So there is a modest leakage onto this because it's not grounded. That Maybe that's why they separate it with the, you know, they don't have the magnets mounted directly onto that, although I suppose heat might be also be an issue to stop it. Uh, to avoid uh, causing problems with the magnets, heat-wise. So, uh, the three manually components, well, four uh, components are manually soldered onto this. Uh, perhaps I should have re-soldered the, the mains cable, but uh, the mains cable is soldered on. The, what I guess is the main power supply capacitor is soldered on, the LED capacitor is soldered on, and this inductor, and the inductor had lifted off. And to heat this, oh, let me go and get it, in fact. To preheat the circuit board, because if you heat the circuit board up, if you try soldering directly onto these aluminium substrate circuit boards, they are, they just sink the heat away so fast that it's really hard to actually solder. And the technique uh, mentioned by the others was to preheat it, uh, and I thought, there's various ways I could do that. I could get a sort of radiant ring heater and I could lay it on it and just time it and use the thermal imaging camera or something to get it off just before it's too hot. But then I thought, what about this? Uh, the remnants of a coffee maker that I took apart just to use this as a heated sort of base. And uh, this is one of those coffee makers that you pour the water in the back and then it makes that chugging noise and it spits it out once it's heated it up into the sort of glass uh, coffee uh, container. So I just wanted to use it as a heated base. So I thought, okay, let's uh, just sit this on there. And what actually happened is it kept, even though it's got these holes, it kept so much heat in 
that it was smoke central. I actually set the fire alarm off, the smoke detector, and all the plastic has malformed. But that's okay. It's, it's really, I really could take this metal plate out. What this metal plate has underneath, it's got a simple heating element mounted onto the back of it. I could mount that on a, a base if I was going to use this on a regular basis and just use it as a heated base because I have to say, I took this up to a reasonable, reasonable temperature and it was dead easy to properly solder these connections. It was very good. It made a huge difference. Note that the uh, to make it low profile to fit into this dome here, they have just tilted everything back. Uh, the capacitors have been folded, uh, soldered on, then folded back, and even the inductor has been sat at an angle. Maybe that's why it was kind of adrift. So what chip is in this? The chip is a WS. 3441S8P. Okay, I'm not sure if you're going to see that. You're going to see that? Uh, so that's interesting. Um, so we can actually check that out. There are only two connections on the inductor. And the LEDs... That capacitor is definitely the one across the LEDs. Because uh, you can see they're all just zigzagging in a pattern around the board like this. Someone's recently mentioning about this white substrate that's used. It's uh, it's a white screen print uh, that's used to cover, well, it, ultimately everything. And uh, it's used, I suppose ultimately it's this white solder resist is a better description, but it is screen printed on. But the annoying thing is that when it comes to the finer tracks, it makes it very hard to see the copper under them. But in this case, it, the copper is actually quite a striking contrast. You can actually see it weaving backwards and forwards. And they've used quite large areas, presumably to help couple the heat onto the circuit board material. So, um, tell you what then, I'm going to go and uh, see if I can look up that chip and we'll investigate it and see how this uh, driver works. So for a refreshing change, it turns out that that chip was very easy to find. It's made by Win Semi, and it is a non-isolated buck offline LED driver. Basically speaking, it's a, a buck uh, volt, uh, current regulator, which just operates on mains voltage directly. So if we zoom up here, uh, if I could actually zoom in like this, let's see if I can uh, get this centered and bring the circuit board in too, so we can actually follow the circuitry out here. So the mains is coming in, and it goes through a bridge rectifier here. So there's the mains coming in, and there is the bridge rectifier. If I get something I can point at that in a more menacing manner. Yeah. There's the rectifier, full bridge rectifier, and then there's a smoothing capacitor after it here. In this case, that's quite a chunky one. It's 4.7 megfarad, 400 volts. Then that feeds the chip, which is also, it's deriving its power through the load effectively, isn't it? That's quite... N oh no, there's its power supply there. It's getting it through a resistor, which may be, I'm guessing, that'll be these two resistors here. Because by using two, they spread the dissipation. What value are those? Can I get close enough to see? 334, that's 330k. They're both 330k. So they are the power supply. Then there's the little capacitor they're feeding up to, which is this power supply capacitor. And in keeping with the drawing... Is that little resistor across it? Hold on, I'm going to have to check that again. Yes, it is. I think it is. So that's 100k, that resistor. So it is, that's that resistor here. And that, uh, that little tiny capacitor there is this one here. So that's forming the power supply just derived from the mains. I'm guessing, ultimately, this uh, chip will regulate the voltage down itself. Uh, we'll look at that afterwards, the modular block of the, the same thing. Other things worthy of note are there is a resistor position here for ROVP, and that appears to be uh, LED open circuit protection. If the voltage goes too high, it shuts the chip down because it detects that something's gone wrong um, in the circuitry here. I'm guessing it's possibly to protect that capacitor as well. I'm not sure that works. Um, the output side of it has a current sense resistor here and initially when the when it, it turns on power runs through the LEDs and through the inductor and the inductor will initially 
it will act against the current flowing through. It will try and limit the current flowing through it. And that will effectively limit the current through the LEDs. But as it saturates, as it go goes up to the maximum magnetic field it can accommodate, then the current will start increasing. And when it does, the current is flowing through the drain here, through the current sense output to ground. The voltage across that resistor there rises up. And the threshold at which it reaches, I think it's 400 millivolts in this circuit. Yes, it is 400 millivolts. Uh, is the point that this will turn off. And then it turns off for a predetermined delay. And when it does that, the magnetic field in here collapses it because it's been turned off and it had built up that field, it collapses down and the it produces another surge of current. The sur surge of current this time as it collapses goes through this diode in this closed loop and uh, lights the LEDs on that other side of the uh, operation as well. So it's quite an efficient little thing. It's quite neat. This capacitor here, which is uh, this capacitor, is just purely to smooth and uh, provide uh, sort of low flicker. Um, and uh, again, it's already got this capacitor here, which helps. So it's quite uh, low flicker. It's, it's good a good a thing. There's the diode under that uh, capacitor there. Uh, what else do we have here? Can we work out which is the sense resistor? I can see which is the sense resistor. This one says 1.4 ohms. And that other one, 1502. 150 and two zeros is about 15k. That might be the uh, over voltage protect resistor. So it really is just a fairly textbook layout of this, you know, what's on here is pretty much what's on this uh, thing. And it's nice that they've actually put most of the components in. The only one that's really missing here is that extra little capacitor across the over voltage protect. They've obviously thought it wasn't really needed. And to be honest, it's not going to affect the uh, stability of the circuit. One uh, resistor they have added, though, 100k, they've added an extra 100k across the LEDs here, just presumably to make sure they go off decisively when the power's turned off. Oh, that could be, actually. That could be it. It could be to just to avoid that ghostly glow you sometimes get, though you'd think that, you know, the circuit might try kicking in. Not really sure. Uh, the What's inside this chip is interesting. It's actually fairly sophisticated. Sophisticated. Here's what's inside, and it's all drawn as modules. So, um, it's got the, the drain is where the current is uh, flowing in from the LEDs, and it's being switched uh, through these uh, FETs, and then it's coming out the current sense to ground via that resistor. And the current sense then goes in to this comparator, which then compares it to the 400 millivolt reference input. And that controls the, that then signals when the currents reach the point it should turn off. There's the ROVP, the over voltage protection. The VCC, it doesn't under voltage. It's got UVLO under voltage lockout. That basically stops it from operating if the... Uh, voltage is too low. It means that the capacitor has to charge up to a certain level before it will kick start. And it also means that's probably going to help avoid that situation that you get the pulse, pulse, pulse. If there's leakage um, caused by, say, for instance, uh, a switch circuit with uh, quite a long run of cables, so there's a capacitive coupling between them, um, that would also be affected by this choice of resistor here balanced with that one to make sure that any particular leakage uh, would not m allow that voltage to rise above that sort of trip threshold the circuit would start. Uh, zero current detect, not sure that is. Is it another thing to detect problems like open circuit or is that possibly to detect uh, when the magnetic field has collapsed completely and then it will start the cycle again? Not sure. It's a sophisticated little thing. It's quite a complicated little circuit. Very interesting. This is uh, similar to, um, I think one of it's the same company. They do one that's just got three pins and it generates the VCC using very clever techniques of a sort of stolen current from the actual LEDs being driven. It's very neat. So yeah, that's quite a neat, neat little circuit board. It's quite a nice module. Cold white. I'm not sure if they did warm white. Uh, did the listing say if they did warm white? Did it give an option for that? Uh, no, it didn't. It was cold white or nothing else. So, uh, yeah, it's quite smart, but the question is how long will it last? You know, so many of these circuit boards, they they run for X amount of times before the uh, one of the LEDs inevitably gets the black spot of death. 
So you could modify these if you wanted one to run at lower current. You could uh, replace that resistor there with a slightly higher value one. That's the 1.4 ohms, was it? 1.4, I think it was 1.4. 1R40, 1 1.4 ohm. So you could actually, technically speaking, replace that with a higher value one, and that would uh, that means that the uh, current would shut off faster uh, because uh, the, the current sense is used to detect the level of current, and if it's a higher value, it would reach that uh, voltage across it much sooner. So uh, it's a fairly s smart little circuit. Let down by the bad soldering um, onto the sort of cold board. But other than that, the design of it is actually quite functional. The one slight downside of these things is it's, you know, you've got the old 2D light fittings where you could just get a standard 2D lamp from various suppliers and it would just plug into the same socket. Likewise, linear strip fluorescent tubes. Uh, these things here are kind of, all very well, they're quite smart, but they're not a standard item. Um, so it means that if you base a product around one of them, you kind of rely on that product, that being available. That said, uh, this is designed to go into the typical ceiling bul round bulkhead type fitting. And there are loads of different types of these that will all happily fit into the same set of area, just along, as in this case, the back plate is steel, which it usually is. So it's quite smart. I quite like this. I'm Maybe going to try this in a fitting and see how it looks.